All right, this is just a little clip about what's called partial fraction decomposition. So the idea is that if you have some fraction that's written like this, in order to do a partial fraction decomposition, what you do is you change the fraction by writing it with uh, denominators that are of lower order than what you've got. And so what I've started here with is a, a second order or quadratic polynomial. And what we're gonna do is write it so that the denominators are linear instead of quadratic. Right, so they're easier to deal with. Well, so as a first move with this, we could just factor it, but it's still the case that the denominator is quadratic because ultimately you're or multiplying an x to the first term by an x to the first term. Um, so to decompose this into uh, with linear denominators, you're going to write it something like this. So if we can find what the a and the b coefficients are here, then we'll have succeeded in doing a partial fraction decomposition. Um, so again, we're just trying to lower the order of the denominator to possibly make this expression easier to deal with for some other application. So again, the goal is to try to find A and B. Well, so if you look at what we've got here, um, here's our original expression, and then here it is broken up into A and B, so we need to work on this. Now, when you add fractions together like this, you know that you need a common denominator, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find the common denominator for these two, which is obviously just the thing on the left, 2x plus 3, 2 minus 3. Um, but we're just going to focus on what happens to the numerators in this case, because then the common denominator is just going to be this product here. So for instance, if you notice this uh, first term here, a over 2x plus 3, to get a common denominator so we could add these things, where we're going to have to multiply this fraction on the left by 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 3. So what we've got is 1 on the left, and then here notice we've taken uh, a times 2x minus 3. And then of course the bottom would be 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3, but I'm not going to bother to write that because that's going to be the same denominator over here. So I'm just going to focus on the numerator only. And then for uh, b, the second term here, I would have to multiply by 2x plus 3 divided by 2x plus 3. And so that's why the b is multiplied by 2x plus 3. Um, so it must be the case if the numerators, uh, the numerator of this side, 1, is going to have to be equal to a times 2x minus 3 plus b times 2x plus 3. And that'll keep um, this equation true if all the numerators are then equal. Um, so now let's see what happens if we, if we multiply this out. So you have 1 on the left. We'll multiply the a times 2x minus 3, and we'll multiply the b times 2x plus 3, right? Now, the reason I color-coded these things here is, so 1 is in yellow here. Well, in yellow here would be terms that are constants. So it must be the case that, say, negative 3a plus 3b equals 1. And then these terms in red here go like, uh, have uh, our coefficients of, or terms that are to the order x. Well, there's no term to the order x on the left side, so the red terms must conspire to be 0, and the yellow terms must conspire to be 1. So we kind of get uh, two equations for our two unknowns, a and b. Well, so let's check this out. If we set the red terms then equal to 0, because there is no um, uh, term of order x over here, we have 2xa plus 2xb equals 0. Well, clearly then what that means is a and b are the negatives of each other. And then if you look at the, the uh, yellow terms, minus 3a plus 3b is going to have to be equal to 1. Well, so if we sort of solve these two things, again, the one on the left, you can see the a has just got to be minus b. Um, well, if you put minus b in for a, you can see we would get 3b plus 3b equals 1. So 6b equals 1. Um, well, then that lets us know straight away what b is. Uh, b is going to then be 1 sixth, and a is going to be minus 1 sixth. So what we've successfully done then is a partial fraction decomposition. We've figured out what these coefficients are that will make this expression true. But now we have rewritten this thing, um, which was 1 over a quadratic, in terms of constants over linear terms. So hopefully that helps. That is a partial fraction decomposition.